Okay, the axiom of pairing says that for any two things that exist, call them A and B, the set of these two things exists. Um, so, seems like a pretty minimal weak axiom. Um, usually we kind of like that. Uh, it's interesting to see just how much power we can get out of relatively small, simple axioms. Uh, so what do we get out of this? Well, at least for now, one thing that we get is, in fact, that you can have singletons, right? If you just pick the same thing twice. Uh, so if we pick the set AA, then as discussed before, by the axiom of extensionality, this has exactly the same elements as just the singleton A. So since the axiom of pairing ensures that this exists, and since that is equal to this other singleton set, then the singleton exists, and will all, uh, the singleton always exists for any object as a consequence of pairing and extensionality. Um, so that's one thing that we get, the existence of singletons, if anything exists, actually at this point in the axiomatic development, we don't actually know whether anything exists, but uh, <clears throat> we will get there eventually. Um, one, one other thing that we get is uh, the ability to construct ordered pairs. So uh, we want to be able to say what this ordered pair uh, AB is in terms of the language of sets, which do not have order built into them. Uh, generally, we, you know, we, we could enter this as a fundamental sort of object in our system, but if we can construct it out of something that we already have, then, we, you know, for, I don't know what you want to call it, ontological parsimony or something like that, um, we would like to have some way of, you know, creating an object out of sets that, uh, allows us to distinguish the first from the second. So the set theoretic way that we do that is we create the singleton of A together with the pair AB. And this way we can say that the first thing, so to speak, is the thing that has a, that is a singleton or the content of the singleton. So uh, the content of the singleton is the first thing, and the remaining element in the other set is the second object in the ordered pair. So, uh, one question that you might naturally ask is what happens if I, you know, what happens if I want to look at the ordered pair AA? Well, this would be equal to the set of the set of A together with the set of the pair AA. Now this just reduces to the set A, and so now we're talking about the set of the set A and set of A, and this, again, by extensionality, reduces really to just the set of the singleton and now you might wonder, well, how do I distinguish the first from the second at this point? Well, the content of the singleton is the first, and hey, look, I'm right about that. And then the other thing, I was kind of uh, uh, strategic in my phrasing, whatever else there is, in this case, the only other thing is uh, A itself, uh, is the second element. You know, if, if I wanted to maybe be even more careful about exactly how I say it, then I would say that the content of the singleton is the first element, and if any distinct element exists in the set that is not a, uh, you know, if there exists a set that is not a singleton, then the remaining element is the second element of the pair. But anyway, so that's so much technicality, but the point is that we have this structure to define the notion of a pair, and from that we can define the notion of a triple, which uh, is the pair of the pair uh, AB together with C, and so on, always choosing to sort of expand this pairing operation in the first coordinate of the pair. So there's the axiom of pairing. Like I said, it gets you obviously pairs, it also gets you singletons, and it gets you tuples of length n.